Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Ithaca, New York. Now joining us again is Jeff Cohen. He's the director of the Park Center for Independent Media at the Ithaca College. He was the founder of the Media Watchdog Fair. But you were also on the board uh, of uh, Progressive Democrats of America. So tell us a bit about what that is and give us a little bit of the history of this f struggle within the Democratic Party. Progressive Democrats of America grew out of the Kucinich campaign and the Dean campaign of 2004. And there was this, and it's part of a long tradition of the Jesse Jackson rainbow campaigns of the 1980s of trying to make the Democratic Party the party of the people. Now let's go back a bit because some of our viewers are younger and don't know a lot of the history. There's been many critical turning points for American politics, the Democratic Party, and big splits. But I suppose the last really big one was the Vietnam War, sure. which was to a large extent a war of the Democratic Party. So yeah. let's maybe start there. Yeah. The, um, what grew out of the Vietnam debacle, the crime of Vietnam, was that the new left was booming and many people in the new left said, let's go into the Democratic Party. They went clean for Gene, they cut their hair and went for Gene McCarthy, an anti-war candidate in 68. By 72, they nominated George McGovern. He didn't do so well in the general election. But it was, there was a real sense that if you're a progressive, you should be working within the Democratic Party to make it a party of social change. And that fight, as you, I think you're right to say, the 60s was key to the beginning of that fight. And then in the 80s, uh, the Democratic Leadership Council with all this corporate money came in and they were trying to retard the growth of feminists, environmentalists, anti-war people within the party. Okay, so let me give you their counter argument. So if I'm arguing their side, um, they would say, well, you guys elected these uh, people, nominated these candidates who got clobbered uh, you're not really in touch with where the American people were at, and you needed us to get the Democratic Party closer to where most of the electorate was. And I'm sure that's their argument. Yeah, the problem with that argument is, aside from McGovern in 72, that when you run a campaign based on moderation and based on status quo, you never get elected. And the Democrats who run as populists, whether they mean it or not, are the ones who win. When Bill Clinton ran, ran in 1992, he sounded like a real populist. He was going to end 12 years of trickle-down economics. Uh, Barack Obama was for change you could believe in and things were going to change. For, uh, unless you run with the message of change, you can't get elected and no one can actually put that message forward with conviction and then govern that way unless you're in that progressive wing of the party. Um, I would argue one of the most successful and popular politicians in the country is Bernie Sanders, who's a socialist and an independent. So this, this idea that you have to somehow, to, to get people to vote for you, you have to give a corporate message or a conservative message or a status quo, it just doesn't make sense. What's been the role of, of the unions? Because the unions bring a lot of money to the table and they bring a lot of get out the vote leverage to the table. The unions have not been as effective for the progressives as they could have been. I mean, I remember them in the 60s, they were part of the reactionary, they were pro-war, they were the ones fighting the new left forces. By the 80s, the Democratic Leadership Council is set up by corporations as a front within the Democratic Party, heavily to fight the power of unions. The unions deliver so much money to candidates, but they don't make demands. The difference between the grassroots forces in the Democratic Party and the grassroots forces in the Republican Party is the grassroots forces for the last decades in the Republican Party have made demands. They've threatened to go outside of the party if they don't get what they want, and they've basically taken it over. The labor unions, the feminists, the environmentalists in the Democratic Party basically get spat on in the face all the time and just turn the other cheek. And they keep giving more money for the next election to the Democrats, whoever they are no matter what they're saying. You know, I was a TV pundit and I've hung out in so many green rooms with the leading right-wingers in this country going back 30 years. One thing I know about them is they really fundamentally want to change this country. I would say change it for the worst, but they want to change this country. They boil over with this desire to radically change America. And you know, sometimes I hang out with the leaders of uh, liberal movements and you don't sense the Watch. fire in the belly. Yeah, you don't get the fire in the belly. You get, oh, our friends on Capitol Hill. Or I spent some time with Senator Sy It's more name dropping instead of we're going to change this country from the grassroots in the interests of the majority of the people and the people really need government on their side. You don't feel that. Now, the Republicans seem willing to wage war where the Democratic leadership seem always looking for truce. 
no doubt. And, and, but I would say it's a problem of the base, that the Republican base is always making demands on politicians, and the Democratic base doesn't. Well, the there's, a, there's, a, there's a real uh, cro uh, cross in the roads for the labor leaders coming up now. I mean, their big issues were health care and public option being the most critical piece of it. Looks like it's dead. And then the other big issue was going to be EFCA, the Employee Free Choice which is, Act, which, which was dead before the election in right. Massachusetts, so right. who knows where the heck right. it is now. Yeah, well, this is, this is the point, that all of these different constituencies, uh, labor, environmentalists, consumer rights activists, peace activists, they always, you know, they hear the right rhetoric during the campaign and, and then their agendas get jettisoned and the, the base doesn't do enough. Here, here's the problem. What we've had in the last 10 years is an amazing growth of independent media. Real News Network, Democracy Now!, Jeremy Scahill, Matt Taibbi even, and Rolling Stone. These are people that are ready to challenge power in both political parties, ready to expose corruption in both political parties. And so you've got this certain independent streak in the better uh, sectors of the independent media, and it keeps growing along with the internet. But on the internet, you have these huge netroots groups like Move On. And the idea of independent politics with Move On just hasn't meshed in the last few years. They've made themselves, unfortunately, sort of a tool of the Democratic National Committee. Well, it might be changing a little bit now because you start to see some of the issues Move On cared about most are falling by the wayside. You start to get a sense that perhaps Move On might. There's, there's no doubt that there's an awakening. What, 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 what concerns me is that the liberal base, the Democratic Party base, has never been more educated, in my view, and that's because of the independent media. The, the Democratic base is, is against an imperial foreign policy. The Democratic base is for real, med real Medicare for all, or at least the strongest public option that will really hurt private insurance. The, there's an understanding of history, and again, it's largely because the independent media is giving us the news in real time every day when we click on the computer and we watch real news, we watch Democracy Now. Um, the, what hasn't translated is, while we have this boom in independent media on the internet, we don't have a boom of independent politics. What I believe are needed are new groups that will be on the internet, mobilizing the millions to make the kinds of demands of the Democrats that the right-wing base, which has truly really transformed the country, the right-wing base and the Republican Party not only took over a major party, they haven't let up on that party until their agenda is put in place. Whereas, uh, you know, on our side, we don't have that. What needs to happen, this is what uh, a few groups are doing, Progressive Democrats of America is one, the idea is we need to take over that major political party. When, when people talk about change and then they get in and they deliver only for insurance companies, pharmaceutical companies and Wall Street, you vote them out. You primary them. We know this is what the right wing has done for decades. It's what they're doing now in Florida. The right wing, uh, they run against conservatives. They're upset with Lindsey Graham, uh, is very right wing. To them, he's not right wing enough. What do we get from Move On and other groups historically as apologies for uh, Democratic office holders who have faked left with their rhetoric and then governed for big business? And what we need is to primary these people. Frankly, I know this may be extreme. I would love to see a primary challenge to Obama when he's up for re-election because unless you build a base through elections and then you hold the officials accountable, uh, then you'll never get anywhere. And as far as I'm concerned, a lot of the Democratic senators should be primaried. A lot of the Democratic Congress members need to be primaried. And if Obama doesn't change course, he needs to be primaried. And then at least you build a list, you build all these groups, you build email lists that have uh, you know, millions of people, and then you move toward the next election and you start getting your people into power. Okay, in the next segment of the interview, let's talk about the uh, always the dilemma that the right's even worse. Please join us for the next segment of our interview with Jeff Cohen.